There is no perfect way to recognize inspiration. People are inspired by so many different things in so many ways that it's impossible to capture all of it. But this video is an attempt to highlight some of the women who have been deemed inspirational to others. In the FSM, there is no formal program to give recognition to the people for their good work that they do or the accomplishments that they achieve. Couple this with great modesty as part of Micronesian culture and you can see why it was difficult for Micronesian Productions to put this video together. This video is the first of its kind and therefore there was a lot of hesitation from the participants to be included in the project. The following women were elected by a selection committee in each state and the top two women are highlighted in this video, while others are showcased in the complimentary book. We see this book and video project as a start, not a final end product. We will continue to work to encourage each state's women's group to hold annual recognition awards to capture others who are not represented in this project. We want to thank the many women who participated in the creation of this video and book. Your participation in this project is truly inspirational. We are also happy with the diversity of women who are represented in the video and book. There are so many deserving women in the FSM who could have been in this project, but today we celebrate those women who were voted to be part of this first project, and we hope that their stories inspire young women to achieve their goals and dreams and to continue to help build the achievements of our small nation. Dr. Merlin Alfonso grew up in Dawano, Colonia. Growing up, she always wanted to be a doctor. It's the profession she believes impacts people the most because it helps to save lives. Merlin finished her elementary and high school years in the FSM and went to the Philippines to finish college where she studied for 10 years to become a doctor. Dr. Abella said she struggled through the years she was in school just as any student from the islands with financial assistance and language barrier to finish her education. She survived those struggling years as she attained her doctor degree and came back home. She opened up her Genesis Hospital and Pharmacy that includes a dental clinic, a wellness center, and a physical therapy center. She is currently a general practitioner, owner, and CEO of the Genesis Corporation. Mrs. Jane Shigiel is the Ambassador Permanent Representative of the Federated States of Micronesia to the United Nations. She's the first and only female ambassador from FSM, and her current office is located in New York City. She's from Sokes, Bombay State. Mrs. Shigiel came back home after she graduated from college because she always wanted to work for her government. She joined the FSM Foreign Affairs Department staff as a Foreign Services Officer 1 and worked her way up to be the first female Deputy Secretary of Foreign Affairs and now she works with other ambassadors from around the world at the United Nations. Mrs. Christina Kiki Paul Stinnett is from Bueno. Kiki attended high school and college in North Carolina in the United States. After three years of college, Kiki returned home to Chuuk. She found work at Bank of America and then with Continental Air Micronesia as a reservations and ticketing agent until she eventually opened up her own travel agency. During that time, her mother, Mrs. Shinobu Milo Paul, was one of a few Chuukis women who started the Chuuk Woman Council, and Kiki was already involved with helping her and the Woman Council in different roles and eventually become their treasurer. When her mom passed away in 2010, the Woman Council voted for Kiki to take over the role of the president of the council, and she still holds the position up until now. Mrs. Margarita Chalame is a Chukis woman from the island of Losap in the Morchlux. Mrs. Chalame has a PhD degree in education. She attended elementary school on her island where she was inspired as a little girl to further her education. Whenever she saw the students from her island leaving on the ship to go to school and then coming back home after graduating from school, she was determined to be just like them. Her father inspired her more by telling people on their island that his daughter would go to college. Eventually, she left her island to further her education in Chuuk Lacoon, where she finished her high school years 
and went on to college and university. After she completed and earned her PhD degree in education, she went back to Duke State, where she now works at the Caroline College Pastoral Institute, CCPI, as a professor. Mrs. Yoslin Sikra is a lawyer and currently she's the director of the Micronesian Shipping Commission. Mrs. Sikra completed her law school abroad and came back to her home state and began to practice as a lawyer there. She's been very instrumental in the Women Association in Koshrai State as their advisor. Yoslin has dedicated her life's work to the recognition of women's and children's rights in the FSM. A long-time advocate for gender issues in Micronesia, Yoslin has taken on the lack of elected women in politics, in government and parliament, and violence against women and girls. She was instrumental in the passing of the Family Protection Act in Koshrai in 2014, a law that criminalizes domestic violence. She has pushed for the creation of a Ministry of Women in the FSM and she was a speaker at the 66th session of the Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women, known as CEDAW in Geneva earlier this year, where she raised the plight of Micronesian women. Mrs. Adeline Noda is a retired teacher counselor from the state of Koshrai. Adeline was working as a teacher and counselor for 39 years and is responsible for teaching and counseling thousands of Kochrayan students over that time. Mrs. Nora also composes and teaches music, something she loves to do until now. She is a woman who dedicated most of her life to teaching and working with young people as well as her peers and other adults. She never wanted to quit teaching and counseling because there seemed to always be more new information that increased her interest to try more and become better. Her dedication to education is a true commitment to her island and the people of Koshrai. Carmen Chiki was the first Yappies woman in Yap's history to run for senator at the Yap legislature. She attended Pix High School in Chuk and went on to attend college at the UH Manoa for two years. Carmen Chigi didn't complete her college education, a high education, but I myself do not have a bachelor's degree, but it never stopped me from learning and contributing. Carmen Chigi ran a juvenile program and was pre-selected by the AG's office because of her experience background, even though she didn't have a degree of some sort. Rafaela Tinan was actually one of the few Yappies women who initially started and gave birth to Yap Women's Association in 1957. Prior to this, Rafaela was picked by the government to attend PICS in Chuk. She transferred to Pompeii and graduated nursing school in 1954. Then she went to Hawaii where she worked with Lahea Hospital in 1956. When she returned to Yap in 1957, she worked at Yap Hospital as a nurse. Then, she and a couple of women gave birth to YWA, which was a highly supported association by the chiefs in Yap. It was here that Rafaela contributed most of her time in organizing the women of Yap on how Yappies women could support their community and their government when Yap was still under the Trust Territory government. My mom is a hard-working woman. She makes sure uh, her roles is being carried out so children like me and my siblings 
and family members, extended family, are taken care of. So that was her role that also inspired me in life, that you work to serve others. I think it has always been my mom. When I was growing up, you know, she had a job and still kept her, her I guess you can say, uh, responsibilities as a, as a mother, as a wife. And I didn't realize how hard that was um, until I got married and had my own family. So growing up, I, you know, I, I saw that um, in our family. And, but like I said, I didn't realize that until I, I had my own family and um, you know, my job and realized it's, it's very, <laughs> it's very difficult. Uh, but she was able to make it look so effortless. And I think it starts from your, and the, to see your mom, your mother, um, of, you know, give you, give you that impression that anything is possible. When I was getting myself ready for a job, my father influenced me to become a teacher. I wasn't sure at that time, but I had no choice. I just tried to obey my father. He made me attend a teacher training school with him. His ambitious way of learning, teaching, etc. influenced me enough to accept teaching as a career. I found out later that I became more interested in teaching and dealing with young children, youth, as well as peers and adults. I had many inspiration people in my life who inspired me to be all I could be. My mother, Shinopo Milo Paul, was a huge inspiration to me as I grew up in Chuuk. She was the chief nurse at the state hospital and was one of the founder of the Chuuk Women Council. She and other strong-minded women were visionary who saw that women could be more than a homemaker and should have a greater role in our community and our society. Uh, as a young girl growing up, uh, it was my father who would put that in my mind by saying, this daughter is going to be a nurse. This daughter is going to go to college. Uh, way back when I was still young, and it's like giving me that idea. So it's like what pushed me toward that direction. So it's my father, but also plus I learned so much from my mom. Looking back, I was inspired by my father, Linus George, who loved to give and gift and give a lot of uh, public services and give back to the community. And I enjoy giving, I enjoy gifting, I enjoy giving back to the community and I can trace that as that being my inspirational source, where I got that. And I learned that it is very important to be humble, that our humility and faith goes um, and, in, and, and I think that that comes from my mom. I really believe that that comes from my mom, who is very uh, devoted and very loyal to her religious and faith obligations. The most inspirational person in my life was my high school teacher whose name was Mrs. Juanita Simpson, a pastor's wife who was 
not only a godly mother, but a godly teacher and a role model for me. Her spiritual life testimony inspired me to live up to my faith and to become a pastor's wife. That's what I became and have been. Saunders, I don't know I school <laughs> Yes, I would say that there are many things that inspired me throughout my life to do what I have done in my life for my career. As a child, the way I was cared for and loved inspired me to love music. As I can recall now, each night my foster mother would have me lie down with her on her arm with an open hymn book and sing out the notes and the words from several songs until I went to sleep. That motivated me to love learning, singing, reading, composing, and teaching music up to the present time. And um, going to school on an island that is far away from the center, you dream. Like when you learn something in school, then it's part of your inspiration. Okay, uh, I like to uh, be like or I want to. Some examples when young boys and girls were leaving the island and the elders would come out and say, Amor uh, Kanet, but many people in the community that gave me that inspiration that there's something in life that we work toward in achieving. My parents and my community pushed me and instilled in me that uh, drive for excellence, wanting um, in trying to be uh, be good and be best at what you do. My biggest inspirational source has always been the Holy Bible. In Juke, we have a very important saying, is it's people. Without people, nothing can be done. I am who I am today, not only because of me. It's in subordination of my family, my clan, my island, my state, the whole truth. Accomplishing what they have done wasn't easy. Every single one of these women went through many challenges, 
Each of them experienced it in different ways, but through them all made each of these women become stronger rather than giving up on their own goals. It wasn't easy. A lot of uh, challenges, financial, social, I mean, uh, going to a country where I've never been to, not even understanding the language, even though I was half uh, from that, uh, from the Philippines where I had my medical education. I school and school and I'm middle And I'm in my time, man. Right. As island women, island the young girls, our challenges growing up in the islands are different from young girls elsewhere. Maybe some of the reasons is that our elderly, our moms and dads and our communities are very protective of us and they don't let us do as much decision making, empowering us that early age to be able to be making decisions for ourselves. So we rely a lot on our elderly, our parents to make decisions for us so that we are not able to think for ourselves. At the very root of what inspired me was the reality of growing up female in Chuk and subject to the cultural restraints that impact girls who try to succeed in life. I see peer pressure as one of the challenges for young women in the FSM today. Young women are pressured from peers to be as they expect of each other. Number two, lack of self-confidence is another challenge. In spite of the fact that everyone is made equal, many of the women in the FSM today seem to lack self-confidence. Custom is one of the challenges I see in young women today in the FSM. Our custom demands the type of work for women at home and at work in our society. It also demands the father, the older siblings, and or the husband to control the women's rights. As an effect, in many cases, a feeling of inferiority is engraved in the woman, the word man. Custom affects the position of women in the family, in the community, in the government, and in church in spite of their qualifications. Young kids today, they're comfortable and they don't have that passion on moving any further. That's what I see challenges with young women today. I think the greatest challenge for our young women today is placing more attention, a greater value on tomorrow rather than today. And also call your future. It can be difficult for young girls to afford early marriage, start a family, graduate from college, or learn a professional given the custom and culture of their fashion and expectation of our parents and extended family. It was a long, long journey for me. And uh, the only thing that I believe uh, got me through it was my faith and my determination to achieve what I set out to do. 
I've always believed that I had to finish what I started. And that was uh, my guiding, that guiding principle for everything that I do. And that was simply it. The desire was there, the determination was there. The means to get there was uh, quite difficult, but uh, somehow everything worked out. And I couldn't believe in myself, but I made it almost 10 years of education. And I'm grateful that I was able to survive that. My generation was different because we see our living status then it's our living status that made us work harder so we can become better in living status. Malam na gane, ne ruban an tin ko unta na ko milin an ko wa ko pan. Ruban na perlu diri wa abu na yerzan sil ko ko bilu araya perlu pa ni na school. Being a doctor is a top uh, profession where I believe that we impact, or health professionals impact people to a very significant level since it's dealing with lives. And as far back as I could recall being a young girl growing up, I've always wanted to be a doctor for that simple reason that I felt that would be a profession that would allow me give me that ability to be able to touch people's lives in a significant manner. And I think that has been my driving force. First, growing up at home, learn as much as what you can from home. Because so much you can learn from home, especially with uh, family values, cultural values, church values and part of the culture which are very uh, important. So be rooted in who you are as a Chukis or as a Pompeian, as a Yapis or anybody else in Micronesia or in FSM. I think that's my first advice. Will first and be rooted in the culture and know who you are, what you are, the importance of family, the importance of extended family, community, church, and tradition, and the government. You need to have a dream. Keep dreaming, but don't just dream and go to sleep. Dream and learn possible ways of how you can I found out how important the work um, was or is, you know, to, to be the government's representative to the outside world. I mean, the Department of Foreign Affairs is the government's channel. Seek accomplishment that you earn through your own artwork, graduate from high school and college, Decide on a profession that you are passionate about. Have several friends who you can honestly speak with about real life issues and whom you trust. Rai korang tak rai. Kemusin ni, 
These eight women represent a small group of accomplished and inspirational women in the FSM. Through this project, we celebrate their success stories. We hope their stories and examples shine a light on the fact that if young women today work hard and follow their dreams, no goal is too high for them to reach. If FSM is going to move forward and develop as a nation, it will take strong and successful women to work hand in hand with everyone to make our nation great. <laughs> Believe in yourself. I have to tell them to know that they have a purpose for living. There is a reason there is you, there is a reason there is me, there is a reason there are all these girls. They have a mission to accomplish and it is up to them to find and align themselves with their God-given purposes and be comfortable with who you are and um, to find your life purposes. After all those years in school, I have been $60 a month, two weeks in and I want to remind them, all the girls out there, that the island needs you. So get your education, hurry up, and come and help us. There is no single set way to make every person feel inspired. That's because we are all different and are inspired by different things. You need to learn what works for you. We don't need to wait to be struck by inspiration. We can find people around us that have done great things and learn from them and expand on what they have done. So when we ask ourselves, what is inspiration? Part of the answer is that inspiration is something under our own control. Now go and find your inspiration.